What up African Road, it's Home Team here, and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And welcome back to my series, A Closer Look. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at the Maasai people. By supporting this channel on Patreon, you're helping in the creation of these videos and supporting this content. If you'd like access to full courses and sources, or you simply want to show your support, you may do so by clicking the Patreon link in the description box below. The Maasai have a long tradition of pastoralism, though today some are adopting a more settled lifestyle, and they speak a language of the Eastern Nilotic Ma grouping, which also includes the languages of the Arusha and Baraguyu peoples of Tanzania. Maasai origins are pretty uncertain. However, some scholars believe that their ancestors migrated to the Rift Valley from what is now southern Sudan sometime before 1000 CE. These migrants practice an agro-pastoral economy, growing sorghum and millet in addition to keeping cattle and other livestock. Most of them gradually adopted a strictly pastoral economy as they became dependent upon neighboring farming communities in the Rift Valley Highlands. At its height, Maasai land ranged from Lake Turkana in the north to central Tanzania in the south. The Maasai have many oral traditions, but one of the primary ones speak about Naiteru. Naiteru is the originator of the Maasai people, if you will. Naiteru means beginner of the earth in Maasai. According to one version of the legend, the supreme god Ngai created Naiteru and his wife. Ngai then summoned Naiteru and his wife to the top of a mountain. Ngai gave them a cattle and told them to live on the mountain, and thus, life began. Another version says after creation, Ngai sent Ntaru and his wife to live on earth with a few hundred cattle, goats, and sheep. Ngai entrusted all the bounty of earth to this first couple on one condition. They were commanded to guard all of nature and keep it well to pass it on to future generations. Naiteru and his wife had three sons and three daughters. The oldest son was given a bow and arrow with which to earn his living. He in turn became a hunter. This hunter is seen as a direct ancestor of the Kamba people. The second son was given a hoe with which to earn his living, and he became a farmer. This farmer is seen as a direct ancestor of the Kikuyu people. The third son, Lieyo, was given a rod with which to earn his living. He used the rod to drive his father's cattle. Lieyo became a herder and is seen as a direct ancestor of the Maasai people. The Maasai believe in one supreme god mentioned before as Ngai. This supreme god is androgynous, meaning both male and female. Ngai's primordial dwelling is located in northern Tanzania, and he created the forests, mountains, lowlands, and highlands. Natural forces such as rain, thunder, drought, and lightning act as gifts or punishments from Ngai. The Maasai god appears in two manifestations. Ngai Noruk, characterized by goodness and benevolence, is black, whereas Ngai Nyoki, the angry one, is red, like the British colonizers who disrupted Maasai life. Ngai Noruk is associated with the north and presides over rain, fertility, the sun, and love matters, whereas Ngai Nyoki is associated with the south and a vengeful attitude and behavior. Cattle is considered by the Maasai to be the greatest gift God has ever given humanity. In a sense, cattle possess the qualities of God and attest to God's greatness and generosity. Through the consumption of meat and the drinking of milk, God and human beings become one again. Thus, meat eating and milk drinking through their recreation of this primordial unity are religious experiences of the highest order. The consumption of meat and milk occur at the most important times in Maasai life, such as birth, initiation and circumcision, marriage and death, and on all critical occasions like rites of passage from one age set to the next. The Maasai were reputed to be fierce and disciplined warriors who could effectively defend their territory and stock, or raid the stock of other groups. Trading caravans from coastal areas were wary enough of the Maasai reputation to avoid Maasai land entirely. In the 19th century, however, Maasai subgroups participated in a series of wars over contested grazing rights. In addition, in the late 19th century, the Il Masa fought the War of Moroji. 
This war unfortunately ended up debilitating Maasai military strength. A series of droughts and associated diseases in the 1880s and 1890s further weakened the Maasai people. Young Maasai males traditionally subsist entirely on milk, meat, and blood for their herds. Blood is obtained by making a vertical slit with an arrow in the animal's jugular vein in such a way that the wound can actually be closed again. Women, children, and older men customarily supplement their diets with agricultural products such as corn and beans. Maasai land sees two rainy seasons, a long rainy season from March to May and a short rainy season from November to December. Traditional Maasai society is governed by a series of age-based groupings, especially among males. Males between the approximate ages of 15 and 30 are junior murin, or warriors, whose responsibility it is to protect the herds. During this period, the murin live in separate areas called manyata and are prohibited from marrying. After age 30, they become senior warriors for approximately 15 years. During this time, they live among the rest of the Maasai people and serve as a sort of home guard or guardian and have the option of marrying. Following this stage, men become junior elders. After another interval of about 15 years, they then become senior elders who make decisions for the entire group. Historically, the Maasai are pastoral and the two distinct rainy seasons in the Rift Valley keep them moving with their herds in search of water and pasture. Land is traditionally considered communal, wealth is determined by the number of cattle owned, and families brand their cattle to differentiate them. Traditional Maasai live in temporary camps called Nkang. Over time, the British began to romanticize Maasai lifestyle and warrior tradition, and this is partly why they became popularized in the rest of the world. The Maasai people adhered to their traditional way of life for quite some time, even after the British limited their range through the treaties of 1904 and 1912. Well, I'm a lot, guys. If you like these videos and want to help in its continued production, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace.